In this video, we will go over active passive HA and how to configure it on a FortiGate firewall. Okay, so to start, the purpose of having HA in an active passive scenario like we're going to be covering here is let's say that FortiGate number one, which will be, we'll name this one our active firewall, FortiGate two is going to be the passive one. But let's say FortiGate number one, which is processing all of the traffic, has some type of issue. Maybe port one has an issue, port three you know, has been disconnected. Maybe the firewall has some type of hardware issue or we've unplugged power, something along those lines. There's an issue with 40 gate number one. Well, now we have an alternate path so that 40 gate number two can, can take over in that case. As we can see, um, port one and port three on both our active 40 gate and our passive 40 gate have the exact same IP address. Now, this is this is not a problem. Um, this is actually by design. So 99% of the configuration is going to be identical between the firewalls, with the exception of maybe host names and, and, and things like that. Um, but in this case, our active firewall is going to be the one that's actually saying, okay, I own 192.168.56.1 as well as 111.120. The passive firewall, it's going to have that configuration in place, but it's not actually going to take action uh, claiming those IP addresses until it needs to. So let's take this scenario. Our active firewall is currently um, handling all of the traffic flow. And then there is communication between FortiGate 1 and FortiGate 2 via what's called a heartbeat interface. So at any point, if FortiGate number 1 doesn't receive a response from FortiGate number 2 or vice versa, that firewall will, will take note of that. So let's say in our case, FortiGate number 1, um, maybe we've disconnected port 1 or port 3 on FortiGate number 1, or let's say the power has been disconnected or there's a hardware issue with FortiGate 1. So we've disconnected power on FortiGate 1. FortiGate 2 realizes that it can't communicate with FortiGate 1 anymore. It converts from being the passive FortiGate to the active firewall now. And when it claims this active membership, essentially, it's going to send a gratuitous ARP so that um, the connected switches are able to update their MAC address table saying that, okay, the MAC address associated with these, you know, these IPs, they're accessible now via, you know, this port connected to the switch and this port connected to the switch versus this port connected to the switch and this port connected to the switch. So then at this point, now 48 number two is going to be claiming these IP addresses. Um, 192.168.56.1 and 111.120, so that traffic flow will also go through 48 number two now. Okay, so let's get into the configuration. So we have 48 one, which is um, this dot .120 IP address, and then we have 48 two, which is the dot .121 IP address. So let's say that we want this 48 to be essentially the the master 48 with the master configuration. Um, and we want it to be the active unit. So in that case, how do we actually choose which firewall is going to have the configuration replicated over to the other firewall? So that's one question that we need to answer. Um, and then another item that we need to address is the firmware version. So currently this firewall, 48.1, has 6.4.2. 48.2 has 6.4.5. They do both need to be on the same firmware version. So in this case, we'll start by just upgrading 40 gate number one. And uh, just a disclaimer, this, this should always be done during a maintenance period. And before doing anything, uh, it's best to just back up the configurations on both of the firewalls, um, just to make sure that if there's any issue, we can always restore. Okay, perfect. So after the upgrade now, they're both on 6.4.5. So now we can begin configuring HA. So the approach that I like to take is to fully configure both firewalls before connecting the heartbeat cables. So I'll ensure that the, cab the heartbeat cable is not actually connected between both firewalls. We'll configure both sides, um, double check to make sure that 48 number one is very likely going to be chosen as the master or the active unit, and then we'll connect the cables up. Okay, so let's start by going on firewall one to system HA. We'll configure the mode to be active passive. The group name and the password will have to be the same on both 48.1, which will be the active, and 48.2, which will be the passive. And then we select the interfaces that we want to monitor. In our case, it'll be port 1 and port 3. And then our heartbeat interface will be port 2. All right, let's save that. All right, and then we'll do the same on the other firewall. Again, maybe we'll just double check just to make sure that the, cab the heartbeat cable is not connected between the two.
same group name and password. We'll monitor port one and three, and then the heartbeat interface will be port two. Perfect. Okay, now as for how a unit is going to be selected to become the primary unit, um, this is just a very, very brief overview of how that works. Definitely consult the documentation that Fortinet has because there's, there's a lot more caveats and more things to consider, but generally think of it like this. Focus on the failed monitored interfaces as well as the age. So let's say, let's start with failed monitored interfaces. Going back to our topology, let's say we connected the heartbeat cable up and let's say that port one on FortiGate one is, has a link down, port three has a link up and then port one and port three on FortiGate two have a link up, right? And obviously both of these interfaces on both firewalls are considered monitored interfaces. So the, the end result in that case would actually be that FortiGate two would end up becoming the active unit because the first condition that it's looking for is failed monitored interfaces, which um, FortiGate 2 has less of. Now let's consider another scenario, which is age. Um, so going back to our topology, let's assume port one and three on both firewalls have a link up. Well, in that case, then the next item that gets looked at is the age of the unit in the HA cluster. So now let's just look um, on the CLI for both firewalls as to how we can actually check this number and how we can reset this number. All right, so the command is get sys ha status. So as we can see on FortiGate 1, we've been up for 20 minutes and 52 seconds. And on FortiGate 2, we've been up for 20 minutes and 19 seconds. So they're both pretty close. Um, there is a command once the units are connected to reset this uptime, but let's forget about that for now. Let's just simply reboot FortiGate number 2 because we want that number to be lower on FortiGate number 2 than FortiGate number 1. So I'm just going to go ahead and reboot that, and then we'll check the command in a moment. All right, now after the reboot, the cluster uptime is emitted in 15 seconds. So at this point, we could connect the, the heartbeat cable between the two. Um, just a general note, though, is try and ensure that there's at least a five-minute difference just so we don't run into another issue. Again, it's just another caveat with, with HA. Um, for all the full details, definitely look into the docs. Okay, so I just did a double check on both firewalls to ensure that port one and port three are up on both sides. Um, so then we're not gonna be hitting the first condition, which is monitored interfaces. We're gonna be focusing on the second condition, which is the age of the HA cluster uptime, which is higher on FortiGate number one. So now I'm proceeding to just connect the heartbeat cable. Okay, and now when we go back to our primary FortiGate, we'll notice that um, we have visibility to both 48s. Now, one is out of sync, but we might just need to give it a few minutes before they both show as synchronized. Uh, but then when we look at 48 2, as expected, we no longer can access this device, and that's because the configuration has been, uh, you know, practically entirely mirrored between 48 1 and 48 2. All right, and after just a couple more minutes, we can see now that both of the 48s are synchronized. All right, so now that we have HA uh, configured and working on our firewalls, let's um, let's test it out. So let's uh, take a look at our configuration. So we have 192.168.56.2, which is our client, and let's um, let's just send a continuous ping um, to 4.2.2.2. Okay, so this traffic is going to be flowing through our current primary firewall, which is 48 number one. Now let's go to this firewall and let's shut it down. Right, so that we can simulate uh, the firewall being unplugged or having some type of hardware issue, for example. Okay. Okay, and let's go back to that client. Okay, so we can still see the ping is still successful here, but let's also go back into that same IP address, the, the dot 120, and as we can see, it looks like we're accessing a different firewall entirely here, which it is. There we go, now we're accessing 48 number two, but it's interesting too is that's confirming again that all the configuration is replicated to this firewall because if you recall from before, this firewall had, um, it had a different background color and now it's actually um, following the green background color like FortiGate number one had it. So this kind of just confirms that our HA um, configuration was able to compensate for an issue on the FortiGate firewall number one. 
And as expected, we only see one firewall that's currently in the HA cluster. Okay, now as another test, I'm gonna boot back up FortiGate 1. All right, and now after a couple minutes, uh, we can see that FortiGate 1 is booted back up, but you know, as we notice, FortiGate 2 still remains the primary firewall and the active in, in this cluster. So your next question might be, okay, what if we want to hard code a specific firewall uh, to, to be the master all the time? Um, if that is something that you'd like to set up, uh, take a look at Fortinet's documentation on HA override uh, and how to enable that. All right, so that covers this tutorial. Uh, thanks for viewing, and we'll see you in the next video.